this is the Provoke Prawn, here with a detailed wiring guide on the Lian Li Unifan wireless setup with the SL wireless and SL wireless LCD versions. I'm going to talk you through all the different things that you need to know for setting up with these fans in your case. The good news is they're very straightforward and they have some interesting highlights to them. You can mix and match fans in your system and you can easily set them up alongside the Lee and Lee's wireless strimmers with wireless connectivity allowing you to control everything with ease and get some really nice lighting in your system. I'm going to show you everything you need to know including how to set it up in Lee and Lee's L-Connect software at the end of the video and I'm going to show you the wiring for the individual fans and more. Obviously you can see that you can add in GIFs, temperature readouts, simple pictures and more into the LCD versions. And you can get some very nice lighting along the sides. And there's some really cool highlights to this with some very nice glows that you have seen them just then in the Lian Lee Vision Compact, which I've done a separate video on. But in this video, I'm going to break down the fans for you and show the logic of them. They're available in triple packs and single packs and standard blade and reverse blade setups. So I'm going to talk to you about all of that and what that means and how you put them in and wire them up directly to the motherboard, which is very straightforward. I'm going to start off with a triple pack of the Unifan SL Wireless 120 fans. Now this pack of fans obviously includes three fans as well as various different things. You have two lots of cables, the wireless controller and the fan screws included in a box. And you'll notice that there's a SATA cable on the right hand side there, which I'll get to in a minute. But the highlight is the USB controller. Now as standard, this plugs into the back of your motherboard into a free USB port. And this is how they get the wireless name because you get the wireless connectivity from this controller. Alternatively, if you don't want to use a port on your motherboard, you can plug in this additional cable to the back of that wireless controller and then you can stick it in the back of your case instead so you can put it out of the way. And then that has two connections on it, which is a USB cable and a chassis fan connection with a PWM header from your motherboard, which I'll show you in a little while. Now, this obviously gives you a couple of different options. You can go completely wirelessly and make it fairly straightforward by plugging it into the back of the motherboard and then controlling loads of different fans in your system and the strimmers as well. Or you can hide it away, so it's going to be a personal preference. It's quite a chunky thing, as you can see, so it sticks out quite away from the case. But you can hide it at the way of the back of your case instead, and then just use these additional cables to plug into your motherboard. Now, that does add some complexity, as I'll show you in a little while. But at the basic level, you take your standard motherboard, so you can see a live mixer motherboard here. And you plug the USB connection in the bottom middle, and then you plug the other cable into a chassis fan header or system fan header on the motherboard which you might have a number of. You can see I've got two USB ports, but that becomes a problem later on. Like the other uni fans from Lee and Lee, these fans simply clip together and you can only clip them together one way round and then you can connect multiple fans together. You can actually put up to four fans into a group, the connection, so potentially you could have four of the fans, the standard fans, not the LCD ones. LCD, you can only manage three, but we'll get to that in a second. And you can mix and match them as well. So you could interlock standard fans and LCD fans if you wanted to. And then you end up with a group of fans that you then obviously need to connect to your system. There are two cables, as I mentioned, and the black one will leave for the second, but the standard cable basically clips onto the one end. So you can see you've got the metal pins on one end of that. You need to hook this little cable into that. Now it'll only clip in one way, so take care when trying to install that. And this basically then allows you to power the fans. Now naturally they're going to be receiving the wireless signal this way as well. It's quite an intelligent system and a lot easier than previously in Leaf fans because it just has one cable. There's no additional controller that you need to worry about. You just need to find a chassis fan header or system fan header on your motherboard and plug that cable in there. And then those fans, all three of them or four of them if you put four in, are then powered directly from the motherboard. The RGB lighting signal is then sent via the wireless controller and that's a single group of fans set up really easily. So you can see just how simple and straightforward that is in theory. Obviously when you put more fans in the system it becomes more complex. Now we'll go on to the LCD fans which is slightly different. So this is a triple pack of LCD fans which obviously have the display in the middle of them. Again you can get standard blade and reverse blade versions of these fans but the logic here is similar but a bit more complicated. 
only because obviously you need control over the display. And so the connection cable that you can see here is different because it requires a USB connection as well as the power connector. So this is what you get in the triple pack box, obviously the wireless adapter, the cable for the end of the fans, and then that extra cable that plugs into the USB dongle if you want it, and a SATA power connection, which again, I'll get to in a second and explain what that's for. So these fans clip together with the same logic. And again, you can have up to three of these LCD fans clipped together in a setup if you want to, or you could have one individual one, as you saw I had as an exhaust fan at the rear of the case, for example. But that's that, you set those up, clip them together, and then you need to connect this cable. Again, as a reminder, it needs an internal USB header and a chassis fan header or system fan header on your motherboard in order for this to work, because otherwise it won't get the power it needs and you won't be able to control the display. So it's important to plug both of those in. Like the standard wireless fans, this again also has an adapter here, which you need to plug in, only fits on one way. And then you'll set that up and plug it into your motherboard. So you can see pretty straightforward wiring for a basic setup here. USB and chassis fan header connections, pretty simple, not too much hassle. Just remember, obviously, to plug the USB dongle in as well. And then you've got a triple pack of LCD fans set up in your system with relative ease. Now, if we combine these two, you obviously have one group, the standard wireless fans with a chassis fan header, and then the other fans with the two connections on your motherboard, and you end up with some nice RGB lighting and nice displays. You can also get the reverse blade fans in single packs, for example. So you can see a standard 120 mil reverse blade fan here. Now reverse blade fans, if you don't know already, basically are designed to sit in a position in your case where they're intaking air, but you don't need to look at the back of them. So you'd put them on the bottom of the case or the side if you wanted to pull air into the case and still have a nice view of either the blades or the LCD screen, depending on which of these fans you're using. So basically the logic is fairly straightforward and similar. The only difference is if you use a standard blade fan, you'd have to put it face down to pull cold air into the case like that. So you'd have a view of the back, which wouldn't be as nice. So the LCD reverse blade fans have the same logic. You'd side mount them at the case as I've done in the side of the Vision Compact that you'll see a little while and you saw at the beginning. And this means that you can see the screen but still have intake fans in your system. So that's what the difference is between those essentially. And the blades face in a different direction. I'll put them side by side in a minute so you can see that. But this makes for a much cleaner setup. Now with the single pack, obviously you get the fan and you get the connector but you don't have the controller. So you do rely on getting that from the triple packs, worth noting. And then you basically just clip the fans together in a group with the same sort of logic and then just wire them in. Now you can see now that we have a lot of fans and the number of connections you're gonna need is building up. Obviously we still only have one cable per group though. So this is much nicer than your standard RGB fans, but these are going to need cables that are going to have to run to the motherboard. So perhaps not as neat as previously in the fans where you could run them to the back of the case and plug them into a controller. Something to bear in mind there. But the basic setup is very straightforward. It just becomes more complicated when you add more devices in. So if you're adding a lot of fans into a large case, perhaps doing a push-pull setup on a radiator and other things, maybe you're using a radiator with a display as I'll show in a second, then you're going to have problems with the number of USB ports. Now, another point of note is the small little details. You'll see that you can pop the cap off the top of the connector that goes on the end of the fans. Then you can actually flip the direction of the wire around. This is useful because obviously you can neaten that up and point it towards the motherboard rather than having it face towards the front of the case. And then with this cap back on, they've also designed it so that you can basically loop it around the outside to tidy that cable up a bit more. Now I will admit this is quite fiddly and difficult to do. And I'm not sure how comfortable I feel basically tying up a electrical cable that doesn't seem very sensible, but this is the way Lee and Lee's designed it so that you can actually do this and then you can neaten that up and plug it in. So that means you can hide the excess cable away because there's quite a lot of length there, which admittedly is beneficial if you've got a rear connector on the board, but not so much for a standard setup. This is what the standard and reverse blade fans look like when you put them side by side so you can see the difference in case you get confused once you've got them all out and it's easy to see. Now, as you can imagine, once you throw in a lot of fans into the system, you end up using a lot of ports. 
This is especially problematic if you use multiple LCD fans because you're then using multiple USB headers and you might only have two on your system. Chassis fan headers might also be limited and you may find that once you've plugged in a lot of the fans into separate groups in your case that you just don't have enough connectors on the motherboard. The other thing you might find is that some of the fans end up flashing white, which is an indicator that they don't have enough power. Now, as an alternative to plugging them into the motherboard, you can actually use this SATA cable instead. So this basically takes the place of the chassis fan header or system fan header cable. So instead of plugging it into the motherboard, you plug it into this cable, and then this cable plugs into your power supply unit instead. So it's getting power for the fans directly from the PSU. Now this can potentially neaten things up a bit because you won't need to plug any cables into the motherboard so much. You can run the power cables through to the rear and obviously take your power supply unit, plug a SATA power cable into it. So this is the same cable that you'd use for hard drives and SSDs and other fan controllers, for example. And it's these flat SATA connectors. And you'd plug your power cable from the fans into this. So they're getting direct power from the power supply unit. And therefore, they'll get more power than they would from the motherboard. And just easier, potentially, wiring-wise to keep things neat. So that's worth considering. Now, obviously, if you also plan on using the wireless controller using the internal USB headers, and the chassis fan headers. This is also potentially an issue for the number of devices. I mentioned already, for example, if you're using an LCD cooler, so you've got a cooler with a display on it, that usually requires a USB connection as well. So then you've got too many USB connections for your motherboard to be able to handle. A good solution for this is something like Corsair's USB hub. So you can see this is a powered USB hub that can accept four inputs to it. And then you have a single USB connection and a SATA power connection. So you plug your LCD fans into that, so the USB connection from the LCD fans into the controller. And then you can run the USB cable from the controller to the motherboard in place of the USB connections you would have been using otherwise. And then just connect the SATA power from your power supply unit to this controller. This allows you to abandon the worry of all those USB connections but it also means that you can run those cables to the rear and you can plug those in at the back of the case so again neaten things up if you want to if you want to get these cables out of the way and then you only have a single USB connection running to the motherboard instead of multiple so this will solve that issue or alternatively you might have Lee and Lee's Edge power supply unit which can accept four USB inputs and again has the same sort of logic a cable runs from that to the USB header and the motherboard and then you've got the USB connections all sorted out with minimal fuss. And then what you need to do is obviously download the latest version of LConnect. I'd highly recommend if you're using LConnect already that you uninstall the current version, go and download the latest version and then run it. You then want to go to the wireless sync setup tab where you should find all the devices listed assuming that you've been picked up nicely by the USB dongle and then you want to bind them to the system. You have to do this in order for them to be recognized and then for you to be able to adjust things on there. So make sure you've gone into that. Also note there's a little light bulb symbol there that you can click on, which will highlight which fans in the system you're actually interfacing with, which can be pretty handy. On the fan utility page, you'll see that you can adjust the RGB lighting and choose from a variety of different lighting effects. You'll also see a little drop down next to that where you can select which parts of the fan are lit up and you can also change the colors and you can choose the speed of the lighting effect, the brightness and the direction, all sorts of other things and easily change that. If you click on the LCD screen on the LCD versions of the fans, you can then select from various different options, including picks, temperature sensors, GIFs and more. And then you can adjust that in there. You'll see that you can also rotate the display there, which is handy because you will have seen earlier in some of the shots that my fans look like they were upside down, but you can easily change the position of these and tweak that. Now, if you want to use GIFs, head over to giphy.com or somewhere similar and search for a GIF that you want to use. So as an example, I've got this prawn one here, click on the share button, click on the copy link, paste that into the browser, right click, save as, give it a name, save that as a GIF file on your downloads, then head over to the LCD screen part, click on add, find the file in the drop down there in the download section and add that in. And now I have a little prawn on the back of my case. 
You can also use the quick sync lighting section in L Connect to change the lighting of all the fans and the strimmers in the case in one go and apply lighting effects there. You don't get as many options, but it is very nice and easy to do. Hopefully it give you some interesting insights into the build. If you've made it this far here, you can see a behind the scenes shot of how I crafted some of the shots for this video, but a lot of effort into it. So hopefully you found it useful. If you did, please let me know in the comments down below or just subscribe and like the video to help me out. This has been The Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.